Hello, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Kyle. I'm a captain and paramedic with Lincoln Fire and Rescue, and I've been on for over 23 years now. And I wanted to take you on a bit of a tour of fire station number one. Okay, one of the things I get a lot of questions of is, do you have a fire pole in the fire station? And at fire station number one, the answer is yes. We have Jeff who's gonna slide the pole for us. Now I wanted to give you a look all the way down there. And there he goes. See your phone there? Hey everybody, so we're down here at fire station number one. We're going to take a look at a couple different things and we're going to talk about fire engines, fire trucks, and we have an ambulance down here as well. So let's start off with a fire engine. Okay, so this is a fire engine. Uh, this is engine one down here downtown. And we'll just kind of do a quick lap around here. This is the piece of equipment that has lots of hose and that goes and puts out the fire. So we're the ones that will come and put out the fire. Have lots of equipment. And then we also have every fire station in town has a fire engine. And they have paramedics on them, so when we're sick, that's why the fire engine shows up as well as the ambulance. Hey, so we have firefighter paramedic Ashley, and she's going to put on her gear for us to kind of show us what we look like when we have all of our fire suit on. So the first thing that she's going to do is she's going to put something on her head that's going to protect her head and we call that a hood sock and it protects her her ears and her neck and then she's going to put her uh, feet in her boots and we we have our boots in our pants already so that they're really easy and fast to pull up all right make sure everything's okay put on our coat And then the next thing we need to do, we need to make sure we have clean air to breathe whenever we go into some place that's dangerous. So we're going to put our air pack on, and we call that an SCBA, self-contained breathing apparatus. thing that she's going to do is she's going to put her mask on and then pull that hood sock back over everything so that everything's protected. Now the bell that you heard was the SCBA turning on. Put on our helmet. And now Ashley's ready to go into a fire. Thanks a lot, Ashley. Okay, so this is the inside of the fire engine. Kind of want to give you a, a shot of this. 
There's the air pack that Ashley was wearing. And I got a question that said, what's one of the most important piece of equipment that we have in the fire engine and on the fire trucks? And I was thinking about this. And I thought, it's this thing right here. And everybody has them. They're seat belts. We have to wear our seat belts because if we get in a wreck or we get hurt, we're not able to help anybody. So I would say one of the things that's most important is being safe and being able to help people. Now we do have some flashlights, so we keep our equipment, our helmets, our radios, our ambulance, our medical bags. We have maps that we can pull up. We have gloves. The yellow thing is a monitoring device. It'll sample things out of the air and tell us if there's dangerous things in the air or not. We have headsets that we can all wear and talk to each other. Okay, continuing on with the tour of the fire engine, I wanted to show you some of the equipment inside. And we have our driver's compartment where the driver keeps their firefighting gear. We also have some tools that the driver would use when pumping water. We have a tool compartment. It's full of all sorts of smashing and breaking tools. That big blue nozzle is something that we could set up, flow lots of water, some safety cones, some extra hose. In the back we have lots and lots of hose. We have things to help keep us safe, to get bad uh, smoke and soot and things like that, as well as lice vests. If we have to work around water. This is our medical compartment. We have all our bags. The cooler has some water for us to drink. Now the orange hose in here is a special hose. It's loaded so that we could take it inside of very, very tall buildings. It's called a high-rise pack. We also have some rope and some tools for connecting to the buildings. We have our chainsaws. Then in the bucket, we have Hydri, and what Hydri is, is it's an absorbent, and it's a lot like kitty litter. So when there's a car wreck, and there's oil on the ground, or fluids from the car, we can put that down, and then it doesn't go down to the, uh, the storm sewer, and get into lakes and streams and rivers and things like that. Okay, this is truck one, and you can see a T1 on the back. And you know it's a truck because it's got that humongous ladder on top. As opposed to the fire engine that does not. There's an ambulance and the truck. So today, right now, we're going to talk about the truck. Uh, the truck is a uh, crew that goes in. To ev everybody on the fire department is an EMT. They can respond to medicals. Their mission is a little bit different. They're not going to go in and put out the fire. They're going to go in and search for people that are in buildings and get them out safely. And they are also going to make it safe, safer for the engine crew to operate. They're going to be the ones going up to the roof of like a house and cutting a big hole to let all that superheated smoke and gas and everything else out so that we can uh, go in and fight the fire and put it out. Let's take a look at the truck. Okay, so starting up at the front of the truck, some of the things you're going to notice, the, the, the inside of the truck's a lot like the fire engine. Everybody has their firefighting gear ready to go so we can get dressed really quick, be out the door. Everybody's got their seat belts and their gear. So if we go to a place and we need to shut down the electricity in the house or the business, we can bring our own electricity if we need to plug something in, because we have an onboard generator and we can plug things in. Yeah. 
one of the specialized some of the specialized tools that they have here on the truck these are called the uh, the J jaws of life they're tools that are really really big and heavy they we use these to cut cars open we have a big fancy pair of scissors on the left and spreaders on the right they hook into these uh, blue green and uh, orange hoses that plug into the generator we got some tools up top we got big wood blocks in the back there that we could use to stabilize cars we have our medical equipment we have our chainsaw we have a rotary saw and the rotary saw behind there will cut through metal or concrete we have a bunch of toolboxes some rope. Now back here we have they're called ground ladders. They're ladders that we would have to pick up, carry over, put next to something if we wanted to go to the roof. There's that orange hose that's a high-rise pack. We got a big fan and we could use the big fan to push air into a building which we got to be careful because we want to make sure that the fire is more out than not otherwise it could be a pretty bad thing so that's why we use our radios and communicate All these bags have a bunch of rope in them and they have something called block and tackle. These are for rope rescue situations. Rope rescue can be either high angle or low angle. High angle would be off of a very tall building. Low angle would be something like if somebody was down in a ditch by a river or a creek. This compartment has a special bag, it's called a RIT bag. It's got a big air bottle that we would have somebody bring in if somebody got hurt inside of a fire or some place that's uh, dangerous. We have our driver's compartment. With, we have different fire extinguishers. Another chainsaw up there. We have more electrical reel everybody's gear the driver we'll take a peek inside and there we go okay we have driver Nick and he is going to explain what happens when we need to pump water so take it away Nick okay yeah so when we uh get to a fire and we're going to be the engine pumping we find the fire hydrant and we hook that into right here this is our master intake and this goes right into the inlet side of the pump um, so we've got all the water from the hydrant coming in we've got ways to speed that water up or slow it down so that we get the right amount of water out of whichever hoses we're using uh, it could be a cross lay that's right here uh, could be one off of the back, one off of the bumper, and based on which lines are pulled and who is ready for water, we have valves right here that we use to send the appropriate amount of water to each of those so that we get a good fire stream and are able to put the fire out better. Awesome, thank you very much. Okay, we're back with firefighter paramedic Ashley, and she's going to kind of show us about around the back of the ambulance. This is the part of the uh, ambulance that we take people to the hospital in. So, my name is Ashley, and I'm a paramedic with Lincoln Fire. Uh, this is one of our many ambulances that we have. It's basically, a 
uh, hospital on wheels. So this is how we get sick patients from home or uh, businesses to the hospital. We have our, uh, we call a stretcher for a cot. We put them here, we can set them up or lay them down, adjust the patient for com comfort. Then we have um, our bag and it's full of uh, lots of different supplies, medications. We can start IVs. We can put tubes in people's throats, help them breathe. Um, we have everything that you could ever need in these bags. We also have a life pack monitor. Uh, this here is how we see people's heart rates. We can interpret interpret different rhythms, see if people are having heart issues, having a heart attack. Um, we have a lot of different tools in the back of this ambulance that helps us uh, diagnose what we think the, what's wrong with the patient and helps us be able to treat them better. Uh, throughout the ambulance, we have multiple different cabinets. Everything's labeled uh, throughout the city in our uh, multiple ambulances. Everything's pretty much set up the same. So when you get into another medic unit, everything's pretty much located in the same place. So you're able to know where things are because when you need them, you need them fast. Uh, we have storage under the seats. This here uh, ambulance is ran with two people, a paramedic and then a firefighter. Uh, your firefighter's up front. He does the driving, gets you to and from the call and to the hospital safely. Um, we also have a radio in the back. We have to call in our radio reports, let the hospital know that we're coming. Uh, we just give them a brief little update. So we would say medic one's en route to your facility. Uh, give them a time, two to three minutes, and we tell them what we have. So we could say, Someone with chest pain, and this is what we're doing. We'll be there in about five minutes. Then they give us a room number, and we meet them there. That way they have a heads up. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Paramedic Ashley. So some of the things that I was asked to tell about myself was how I got started and interested in being a firefighter. Uh, this goes back a long time. Uh, I was actually lifeguarding at one of the swimming pools here in Lincoln. And I had met some firefighters a few months before uh, and they showed me around the fire station and I had, didn't really give it much thought at the time. Uh, but I was lifeguarding and I had to jump in and I saved a person from drowning and I thought wow that was really neat and I felt really good and I thought that this must be how firefighters feel like all the time and so I started looking into becoming a firefighter and what it takes to get on the fire department and some of the things that they do and what their schedule is and things like that and the more I thought about it, the more I learned about being on the fire department, uh, it just seemed like it was a really good fit for me. And so um, I became a firefighter uh, in January 31st of 1997, and I've been with Lincoln Fire and Rescue ever since. Thanks. Okay, we're inside the museum here at fire station number one. The centerpiece here is the very first motorized fire engine that the city of Lincoln has. We're lucky to have it. Way back in 1911. So that's over a hundred years old. And you'll notice that the steering wheel is on the right side. And it doesn't seat a whole lot of people. And it doesn't even have seat belts. One of the things I like to point out the drive on this is a chain drive, just like a bicycle, but there's a motor that, that put, you know, spins that. We have a lot of stuff here. This is an early bomb suit. This is some older turnout gear worn by a guy I used to work with named Dan Winkenwarder. And he was caught in a flashover 
and melted his helmet. Now the plastic on the shield here, this part right here, starts melting at 500 degrees. 500 degrees is the hottest your oven at home can get. So it got hotter than that, and he was able to get out and be healthy. His gear protected him. We have the silver rescue gear for airport firefighting. Station 11 used to be out on the airport runway and cover the planes. That orange helmet is the uh, first thermal imager that Lincoln used to have. It was a big heavy helmet that you had to wear and you had a battery pack that went over your shoulders. And the chief's drivers used to be in charge of those. An old station uh, fire department roster from 1965. Another look at the fire engine. You have the hose reel up top. And then it has cotton jacketed hose in the back. And you'd have to uh, make sure and dry that out, otherwise it would rot out. Some different pieces of equipment through the ages. And what's cool is a lot of this equipment is, even though it's old, it looks a lot the same and it, that, you know, would still function today if we absolutely needed it to work. A bunch of different hose wrenches. So this right here is an alarm bell and back before the telephones were in everybody's homes you would have to go out and pull a lever in a box that was like located on the street corners and that would notify a central alarm station and then the central alarm station would send it out and it would uh, sound a gong and then it would print out a box number and everybody knew where all the boxes were and you would have a box alarm and some places still even call it today a box alarm this big thing up there by the ceiling is an old hose cart it was pulled by a couple of people And it had a uh, hose on it. The big bell. This is the back of the fire engine. And there we go. And I think the number one thing is that you have to have a desire to serve. Uh, the, the motto of the Lincoln Fire Department is the desire to serve the ability to perform and the courage to act. So that's, I think that says a lot about the people that I work with. Um, they just go and help people and that's what we do. People need help, they don't know what to do, they're in a situation where they need help, they need help right now and they call 911 and we come and we are able to help them and we're able to save people's lives. We're able to save their homes and property. Um, we're able to uh, help mitigate uh, environmental things with uh, hazardous materials response. Um, and all of this is done, I would have to say the number one thing is uh, people stay calm. They stay calm in an emergency. They're able to think. They don't freak out. They're not screaming or yelling or anything like that. They stay calm. They're professional and uh, they do their job. They go out and they do their job every single day and they do it exceptionally well. So if you think that this might be something for you, um, we have an Explorer program. 
that's affiliated with the Scouts. I'm in charge of the Explorer program, and it's open to people that are ages 14 to 21, and you're exploring the uh, career option of becoming a firefighter.